Hi guys and welcome back to another lesson. Now guys, I'm super excited to say that I've got an OG in the English GCSE world, Stacey Ray. So guys, I'm super, super excited for our collab and we're gonna kick off our collab on this channel with the five quotes that you can use in any inspector calls essays in your upcoming GCSE exams. Okay, so myself and Stacey will be going over the key quotes based on the top five characters within the play and we'll also explain how you can relate it to the key themes and also context, okay? So, starting off guys, the first quote that you can use, especially with Mr. Burling's character and when you're answering any question, both of Mr. Burling, age, social responsibility and so on, is when he says, I still cannot accept any responsibility. Now, this quotation is perfect, firstly, in capturing the essence of Mr. Burling's character. Remember that Priestley is using him as a character that highlights the cold capitalist system that ruled the Edwardian system, okay? So Mr. Burling, he is the quintessential businessman who literally sees every single working class person that works for him as just cold labor. And of course, what this is illustrating more broadly is Priestley highlighting how a lot of upper class Edwardians refuse to accept or even take their social responsibility towards helping others in society, this increased class divisions. Also, of course, this highlights the selfishness of the upper middle class and the upper classes. And equally, Priestley, who was a socialist, is highlighting the cruel aspect and the cruel side of capitalism. Okay, so this quote is perfect, not only when it comes to Mr. Burning's character, but also if you're writing about any of these key ideas within your Inspector Calls exam. Okay. So Stacey, what would be the second quote? I want to move to Mrs. Berlin, and this is when she's being interrogated, and this is um, towards the end of Act 2, and she talks about um, prejudice made against her case as to why she's behaved the way she has in the charity. What we want to really do when we do close analysis, guys, is look at this word prejudice, and if you just go to the, the dictionary, sometimes it can help us, and the word prejudice means that you um, discriminate or you, you treat somebody differently, and it says for no reason, with no thought, uh, no thought behind your action, and no reason behind your action. So so actually what you get there is a confession by, by um, Mrs. Berlin without her realising she's confessed to anything. And again, if you look at the language, me against her, like things like that are showing us the class divide. They are showing us where socialism and capitalism naturally come into conflict. Um, and this idea is detached. She always talks about girls of that class, girls of that sort, her, as if there is this huge disparity between the two. Um, so Mrs. Berlin does quite a lot for you when she is detailing her uh, role in the death of Eva Smith. Okay, now the third quotation is what Sheila says, but actually this quote is powerful because you can relate it to either Sheila or Inspector Gore, okay? So when Inspector Gore highlights that, you know, towards the end of Act 3, there are millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths, and then he says if, we, if um, the Berlings don't change, they will face fire and blood and anguish. Sheila, who's so impacted by his message, echoes his words by saying the same words that he says, fire and blood and anguish, okay? And here, what this is illustrating firstly, especially when you're thinking about the theme of age, is that Sheila is showing Priestley's belief in the younger generation and inspiring social change, okay? Priestley wrote this play and he used the characters of Sheila and Eric to show that it was the younger generations that were gonna be the ones who are gonna change society and make it more equal, okay? And of course, Sheila has really internalized the inspector's message. But also what this is illustrating is Sheila accepting her social responsibility as the daughter of an upper middle class man and the power that comes with that to help change society by showing kindness and charity towards poorer women like Eva Smith and Daisy Renton. And of course also what this is illustrating is how social change will be driven by people like Sheila Belling. And especially also remember that this play is also a very feminist play, okay? So Priestley was also using the female character of Sheila to illustrate that the power that women had also to drive social change, okay? So this quote is powerful because not only does it tie to Inspector Gould's words, but also Sheila. So you're literally killing two birds with one stone. I want to move to the to the opening description of Eric, uh, which is half shy, half assertive. I can't to, um, tell you enough how much the first page in the stage directions give you every single character and their behaviour. And what Priestley will do is will foreshadow their behaviour as well. So Sheila and Eric are going to get a similar description. Eric's being half shy, half assertive. And again, what we're learning here through punctuation and this idea of the juxtaposition of shy and assertive is the two different Eric's that we're going to see. The, the shy Eric is the one around Mr. Bill and Gerald at the beginning who's drunk all of the time. Why is he shy? He's not really a powerful man at the, the opening. He doesn't really have a business perspective, does he? And he probably 
probably knows that his behaviour um, is criminal. Um, when we get assertive, what we're seeing again is policy very subtly and subconsciously warning us about what the class divide has created. And with Eric, we are getting misogyny and capitalism together. And those two things combined actually physically ruin um, Eva Smith as well as emotionally, spiritually, mentally, all of those different things. The assertive idea is when we see him being quite aggressive and we get those descriptions about turning nasty. You will see here that, again, in terms of like thematic response, we've got the the presentation of men. Eric Berlin will answer a man, a man question all on his own if you can analyse him quite well. Um, inequality, um, responsibility in the sense of the way he is assertive, it's his responsibility not to do that to our um, women at all, isn't it, really? Um, really quickly, just take a look at Sheila. She does um, a similar one, which is um, half serious, half playful. Okay. And the fifth and final quote, which highlights Gerald Croft's character, is when he quite arrogantly tells the inspector who's come in to question them that we're respectable citizens and not criminals. Number one, what this is showing us about Gerald's character is he is somebody who's quite pompous, very upper class, and he's very well aware of the power that he has. But this quote is also very deeply ironic, okay? Saying that, you know, they are uh, respectable citizens rather than being criminals, because this is illustrating the belief that a lot of Edwardians had at the time that the poor were somehow immoral and they deserved the terrible treatment and, the, you know, the low pay that they got, whilst people who were in the upper classes were somehow more moral, morally superior, okay? So Gerald Croft is kind of highlighting these very, very, deeply um, held views that a lot of upper class people had at the time and remember that Gerald is also the only non-family member within the Burling family okay so he's an outsider but the reason why Mr Burling wants this marriage to happen between him and Sheila is because he's an aristocrat okay so he's like in the top top tier of society however we can see that that he holds the worst and least progressive views even if he's part of the younger generation, okay? So what this quote is really, really powerful in illustrating is firstly, the deep class divisions were really upheld by people who were especially in the upper echelons of society, so really, really top tier in society, but also the refusal of social responsibility that he had towards the poor, kind of like Mr. Berling here, who can't accept any responsibility. And of course, as I mentioned, he's highlighting a very commonly held belief within the Edwardian upper classes that you know, the poor were somehow responsible for what they were going through, okay? This was a view that was called at the time, kind of seeing them as the undeserving poor, okay? So this quotation really, really perfectly captures Gerald Croft's character, along with Mr. Burling and Mrs. Burling, he's one of the characters that refuses to change, okay? So guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and please make sure you head over to Stacey's channel, because we have put together an amazing Macbeth video, where we highlight the five top quotes that you can use in your upcoming Macbeth GCSE exams. Okay, so make sure you head over to Stacey's channel. Thanks guys. Thank you.